the network. Wow, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man and I have another link up today. I'm linking up with Danny Asadi. This guy is an electronic and hip hop producer and a live trap instrumentalist. I say that right, right? That is instrumentalist or artist? Yeah. Artist, artist. Let's be an artist. Artist, a full blown artist, and this guy has one of the best uh, brands I've seen in a good minute as far as just producers who are doing their thing, the way he conceptualized everything as a whole. We'll get into that. I want to see how much is intentional, how much is just organic, and you you don't even know what's happening. But yo, Danny, what's up, man? I'm so glad to have you. I appreciate you hopping on. Dude, uh, like I'm, I'm honored to be interviewed by you. I watch your videos all the fucking time, so th thank you. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Like, I, let let's start here because I want to get right into the uh, the hustle of things. Before you know, thing we we hopped on, we were talking about the the hustle of getting to where you are now. Which I'm I'm going to go to vanity for people who need vanity to know that people are worth listening to. You got 270k on Instagram right now. You're verified. You got you get a lot of views. You know, important people follow you. All that good stuff, right? Um, yeah. But like before, and to to get to this period, you had to hustle, right? And you talked about like you were just in a mode, right? You were zoned out, not necessarily appreciating things from a standpoint of happiness. So before we even get into any philosophy, what did that what did that mindset, that DNA really look like to get you where you were? I know you might not say it was necessary, but you know, I think it's necessary. It was necessary. What, 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 who were you in those moments? Um, yeah, like, who were you? Okay, well, uh, yeah, so I go by artist name Asadi, and I, uh, Danny Asadi is my full name. Um, Daniel Asadi is my full name. People call me Danny. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. I was born in Dallas, Texas, but I was like there for a month. But most of my life, I was in Columbus. Yeah. When I was probably, I mean, ever since I was like, like a little kid, I loved music. I really got into it the older and older I got. Um, I was in a band, you know, then I started getting into producing music in high school and I was obsessed with it. Well, no one around me did music production no one uh dj no, none of that crap um people barely played the guitar around me to begin with i was uh raised in a very privileged like suburban white community everyone wanted to be like a doctor or this or that and so i was really hungry and kind of i think that's when i started developing this kind of attitude where i just really wanted it and I took it very, very seriously. And that hunger just kept growing. And when I was like 19, I went to um, Full Sail University in Orlando. I started um, taking it even more seriously there and being uh, better at production. And at the same time, I was um, really getting into like playing that shit live. Um, and while I'm at school, you know, I'm meeting all these professors and um, uh, alumni that I would visit and they got Grammys, they worked with this and that artist and all that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, every time I got some sort of like, I don't know, like every time I got some sort of um, like window of like what the industry's like and, and people actually doing it, I was like, motherfucker, I want that, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, I, I don't know. I, I think it came from when I was, I'd say when I grew up in Columbus and everyone around me was telling me like, you're not gonna make it. It's mm -hmm. luck or, you know, it's, you should take it as a hobby. Go to school for, go to medical school, go to, go to school for like being an engineer or something like that, you know? And um, it was, I was really like, no, I don't want to do that. Screw this. This is depressing. I want to make music. This is my passion. And I just didn't want any excuse to get in the way. I wanted to know everything it takes to make it in the industry. I never did drugs or alcohol because everyone was telling me how people 
didn't make it or whatever because they became drug addicts and stuff. I didn't. Um, I immediately like found a mentor because I heard from someone like, yo, you need to get a mentor. Like, anything I heard that, I, that felt right in my gut, I was like, I need that. I need to do it. I need to do it. I need to do it. Um, and one of those things was, you know, making a lot, making, being consistent, right? Like how you always talk about it, making songs, releasing songs consistently, making content, releasing content consistently. Um, I was trying to figure it out at first and I only did like a video a month and um, that did great for me because back then the algorithm was just like, you make one video and it could get like 300,000 views and you've never made a video before, you know? Um, yeah, rest, rest in peace, Facebook. But um, so I, I was doing that once a month. I, I would make like six videos and I like worked so hard to make these six videos. Release one once a month. And that's kind of how I started like really understanding, wow, this shit's working. All I gotta do is make these videos, make this music and do it consistently. Um, and I guess long story short, that's pretty much what I've been, uh, dedicating my passion towards for the past, like three years. And, um, I think looking back, I like the positive, um, the positive things that the things that I accomplished were definitely like, yo, you work hard, you hustled, you were consistent good for you. Now look at you. You got 270,000 followers on Instagram. You got all these plays on Spotify. You got all these uh, plays on these videos. And the other side of me is like, man, you could have been a lot more positive about this shit, you know? Um, you well, you know, I, I was, I don't know about you, but, or anyone watching who's a musician or producer, when you get advice from you know, people who've done it and they're on YouTube or, you know, uh, doing lectures or alumni from, a, from your college telling you, giving you life advice. Mm -hmm. It's all about being diligent, working hard, you know, that kind of stuff. But I never learned about like, you gotta be, you gotta enjoy it, you know? You gotta enjoy it. You gotta have fun. You gotta, you know, go out a little bit and, and um, <laughs> be fucking, be social. And, uh, but also um, more specifically about the process, like enjoy it, you know? Don't make something because, oh, this is what I need to do to be famous, you know? Make something because you like it, even if no one is gonna like it. And I realized looking back, the ones that I just I just wanted to make the songs that I just wanted to make the videos I just felt like making those are the ones that made me um, that was a big like W for me not the ones that were like forced okay. you know Got you. I forget sometimes you know there's a human element to being a content creator on the internet you know how many videos have you at your peak of like, ah, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it, I need to do this. Yeah, yeah. What are you making a, a day? Well, I'd say because the, the way my videos are set up is I have to do them in chunks and I have to really plan them because I don't just sit here and just do this in front of my, you know, computer all day. Like, I have to go to a nice location, make sure it has a good theme, uh, make sure the song's well prepared, all that kind of stuff. And you know, that takes a lot of planning and time. And I also like to incorporate a lot of collaborations, which we can get to later. So I'd say, I mean, it's more about like, I do a chunk of videos, like 30 videos, um, 30 to 40 videos for the next, like, I don't know, fall season or winter season. You know? Are you doing seasons? That's interesting. I never thought of someone like doing it in terms of, that's pretty cool and that explains a little bit about again that aesthetic like all right i'm not gonna play for the volume's sake but yeah i mean you have these cool as environments that's what i mean as far as being one of the best branded people i've seen man there's there's always exactly what you said 
right? Exactly what you said you do, it comes across. Like there's always these cool locations, this cool aesthetic. That's part of why I like, I didn't even think you lived in the country, man. <laughs> like I was like, where, like what beautiful place, like what place has all these beautiful places? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> like, like no place that I know. Yeah, so uh, that's that right there is Santa Clarita, California, okay. uh, right above LA. The if you look at the one in the top left uh, with D sharp on the violin, that's uh, <laughs> that's in his patio. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, because because when you do like a frame, if you really think about it, um, you just gotta find something that has a lot of color and looks good, mm-hmm. but it's just in that frame. You, you don't need to worry about like the video uh, with um, with the violinist. There's there was like construction and shit happening in the background. Really? And it was yeah. It, it, there was just a bunch of stuff around him that we didn't have in the shot. You know that kind of stuff. Um, I think you just gotta have a. I'd say you gotta you gotta really. I for the longest time I cared about. Um, like the aesthetic of my videos, like just make sure they're not like, they're clear, they're nice, they look good, you know? They're like, I, I like my videos to be a little bit like eye candy, you know? They are, man. They really, I mean, they really are the, the different sets, setups, man. I'm, one of my favorites, I think the the first one that I like just watch, watch was like, yo, I, I probably watched it 50 times. It was actually this one right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those kids kill it! Yeah, I think they were my, my. This was my first time seeing them, which you made me become a fan of them. I, I went and looked them up and everything, and saw that they were on Ellen. Yeah. Like that the scene was yeah. dope. You were dope. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> so, I mean, that attention. Yeah, so, thank you, man. The way I mean, I think. If I got to give any life advice to anyone trying to make it is, and I mean, I, what, what am I to say? Cause I haven't, I haven't, I don't think I like actually made it yet. Um, I still consider myself as an up and coming artist, mm-hmm. but you know, like wait, make sure you have an like practice, um, having an eye for things, you know, like on the spot, like yeah. really think your best on, making sure that the that it looks good or you know it sounds good and all that kind of stuff yeah it's like a practice it's like you know it's like working out like you gotta if you don't uh perfect practice makes things perfect you just gotta practice like having a good design um element you know that kind of thing i definitely get it man even though it takes a short amount of time i mean a longer amount of time at the beginning over time when you build that catalog and you just get better at doing so you do it faster, you get the result of a page like yours, right? And it's not all about the Instagram page, but you get the result of a career where whether it's your Instagram page or your your music videos or whatever you do, it has yeah, that exactly. right? like anything that you touch now has a sense of that energy. So uh, I, I definitely agree with it and I think you're a walking um, testimonial of it. Now you said you haven't made it yet in your mind. What level, like what what does making it look like to you? Have you had a specific goal in mind or is it just, uh, no, nah, I don't even want to imply any answers. I want to let you talk. Yeah, is it a specific goal in mind? How does that work for you? I want to be so freaking successful and famous that if I walk, I can't even walk into a grocery store. That's what I want to be. Oh, you wanna be I want to be like, I want to, yeah, I want to be like, just top, top of the food chain. I want to just call the shots. I just want to sit in my chair and be like, I call the shots now, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, shoot for the stars. And I think that, I mean, you, you got to be happy wherever you are, you know, wherever you are career wise. You always got to be grateful. Interesting in, in balance, right? Being happy, still wanting more. Right. Like being grateful, but also a little bit cocky. 100%. Okay. So what do you think, based off your analysis and somebody who's already walked a, a certain, you know, amount of road, how, what does the road ahead look like? Um, right? You made the progress you made, but to get to that level in your mind, what does 
what is it what have you studied in terms of what you need to do to become one of those people i mean at the end of the day i have no fucking idea but um i just gotta give it a try act like i know and i think what i what i'm acting like i know now is collaboration but mm. this time instead of focusing so much on collaborating um on doing instagram videos i'm focusing more on actually actual songs because as great as my instagram is i cared way too much about it um looking back i think i cared cared about it more than i cared about my spotify my actual music mm. i know kids that have like 2000 followers on instagram but you know they're making way more spotify streams than me way more and um that really made me realize like dude you got to have balance not don't throw all your um energy on one platform just because it's the pop in one look at look now tiktok's going to blow up and instagram is going to be like facebook and all that hard work i put into 270,000 followers is going to go down the drain unless mm -hmm. if i get started on tiktok which i did and that's what i want to do i want to have balance with with all the networks so that's one thing i want to do the collaboration aspect is that way I can get other people's Spotify followers to check out my, my content. Um, but that's like my business brain. My artist brain is also like, I really want to collaborate. I've been working on music like on my own for the longest time. And it's just super fun to collaborate with other people. So that's what I, that's my like main thing right now. So collaborating on actual music. Yeah. And I think I want to, I want to secure that, um, collaboration hustles reaching the politics of it you know like reaching out to other people making music and all the way to the end product and doing that for and never giving up on that like i never gave up on my content creation you know it's interesting that you say that and it is a muscle because when i think it translates everything that you're doing translates which if i had to bet on you i would say you would be successful moving forward because creating the eye having the the per perfection towards the content that you were creating on instagram that's going to help all right help not guarantee but help you on TikTok. but it's also going to help you in your other artwork and however you catalog things but then also the collaboration yep once you know how to collaborate with people social media the rest of business is is collaboration collaborating on music collaborating in partnerships which is a harder part of of the game right just the actual business of things and understanding yeah navigate your own ego and other people's egos but those the people who do it best yeah man in your industry you got to do it i one of my biggest struggles is communication because all i know is music you know but the mm -hmm. whole like you know from small talk to you know getting a cool deal together establishing relationships and stuff i'm like just getting into that which is really weird i mean i should have really taken that more seriously too i think these past few years i mean i'm not that i'm like it's too late but um that's that's one thing i want to learn probably something you know way more than me um i think that's really important is to like understand how to um i don't want to say deal with because you have an ego you like i have an ego too but like you know other people's egos is like you gotta have some respect, you know. Think about, like one thing I learned is it's always a good idea to think about what the other person wants and try to help them before you tell them what you want. Mm -hmm. like, like for a simple example, I'd say like, if you're in a studio and the first thing the person you're working with is like, I want this, I want that, I think we should do this, I think we should do that. And that person doesn't have the set time of day to even tell you like, ask you uh what do you think we should do what are you what is your opinion you know yeah and uh, uh yeah just like you know don't be ignorant I, that was me like i'm always like i know what i want let's do it this way and obviously that's a big dick move but you know yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean hey i mean i think in one way we watch so many people do that like so many people that a lot of times people admire 
seem like, hey, we just come in a room and X, Y, Z. This is me, especially in the entertainment world, right? I'm the big stars, but in the back end, especially when there's these people that are oftentimes even bigger than them in terms of business and controlling everything, you have to be able to navigate and play that ego game. And I, and I don't even mean that negatively because even what you said, as far as dealing with other people's egos, oftentimes causes you to deal with your own ego because the only reason their ego becomes a problem is also the co- conflict with your own ego. Right. Right. So, right. How do I manage this and how do I not escalate the process or, or make something go awry just because I have my own ego issues to deal with. Yeah. So it's an interesting aspect of things, but I think acknowledging that you have one is always going to be the first step. And then it's not something you should try to get rid of. It's just how do I channel it positively, productively, right? It's, it's a tool to be used, but most people are like, <laughs> they're, they're victims of their ego, you know what I mean? Versus masters of it. Right. I think two things that I um, had for the longest time, unfortunately, was I was, I felt like one, the whole world was against me. <laughs> like I acted like, you know, like I, I, I acted like everyone was out to get me. And um, I think, it came from, it definitely came from like, back in 2017, I had a really good agent and he got me like 30 festival gigs. And like, no one knew me at the time. I was like 20K on, no, 15K on Instagram just because of a a video went viral. Um, And like 70K on Facebook or whatever, it didn't really matter. But he just liked my music and he was like, let's get you some shows. And he had a lot of connections. And a week later I'm getting like, all these offers to play shows for money that I've never, I never had this much money before. Like I was like 19. And, um, but when I went to these shows, some of them, a lot of them actually were really, um, I realized like the show industry, even when, even the most professional ones, even the biggest ones, um, you know, you can't control all the employees there. And a lot of them do some like, really fucking annoying shit, you know? And um, like what? there's been festivals I've been to where I had to just walk all day following this person just to collect a check to like not collecting, like not getting paid. Um, a lot of times there was a lot of times, oh my God, this was the worst. I, now I remember. This is the worst. I show up and they have my tech writer, right? What every, everything I need to perform. And it's not much, but it's very specific things that I need. Um, like I need a drum throne because I sit like I sit on a chair or at least a chair, right? And um, I'm not a DJ. They, everyone kept thought, thinking I was a DJ, but I'm playing on the pads and the audience needs to see me perform. Like I worked so hard learning how to play this shit live. I'm not about to have that blocked off by a DJ booth, you know? So my, I always sent my tech writer. I always sent it. They even, the buyers even signed it, like that we read it, you know? Um, and I show up and they're like, all right, what do you want? CDJs? And I'm like, dude, did you read my writer? <laughs> so yeah, I go on stage and uh, nothing set up and I'm freaking out and I'm like, oh my God, like I don't have anything, you know? So that, that happened a lot. Um, another festival, man there was like a really, really trashy um, like limousine service that picked me up. Um, And yeah, I almost died, long story short. It was like the guy's car, um, his brakes failed. Um, And I don't know, maybe God was watching over me, but I was was like, hey, can we stop by like a a convenience store? I just want to like grab some water or something. I'm really thirsty. The guy's like, yeah, no problem. He pulls in as he pulled in out from the highway, which by the way, he was going 80 miles per hour. He pulled in to the parking lot and his brakes failed. And we were there for like an hour waiting for another ride. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, yeah, a lot of shit. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, I think, and oh, and I never had a manager. I, I like tried out managers. So I never had like my guy with me. I never had anyone around me. So when I went to all these festivals, it's all on my own. 
So I felt like I had to like really defend myself. So that, that was the defensive attitude. Got you. And from that, from that, when it comes to negotiating deals, when it comes to like even getting like opportunities in the first place, I wouldn't even think like financially, I would think this guy's trying to screw me over. You know what I mean? Or I would think even if I got an opportunity, I'd be like, okay, what, what the fuck is this? Like, what is this guy want? You know? Uh, the another, another side of me, I think was like the ego thing. Like I really thought, um, I really thought I deserved things like not like, instead of like deserving something, like you want to say you earn something, you work hard to actually get it. And if you haven't gone yet, then you just got to keep working hard. Yeah. But my attitude was like, I compare a lot. Like, like I would, I would be trying to, you know, run as fast as I can to jump over this cliff and make it over to the other cliff, you know? Yeah. And I keep failing and I keep failing. And, but I see people who, from what I see, you know, from, from my point of view, like have shit handed to them and are soaring over me to the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, now that's a wrong mindset obviously because you have first of all yeah because first yeah because first of all you don't know what who they are what they've been through you have no idea and second of all like that's life like you're always going to see people soar over you you're always going to fail your way to success it's Mm -hmm. always going to seem like when you make it there were hundreds of other people who uh, made it before you. But one thing that I never um, learned until not too long ago is, but when you make it, you made it. And that's all that matters, you know? And that immediately just shut off my whole attitude about, I deserve this, I deserve that, I've earned, or more it's like, I'm gonna keep working hard, and I know I'm gonna get it one day, whether it's tomorrow or, you know, two or three years from now. And believe it or not, I've been getting amazing opportunities. I mean, I'm like that, and I'm the least stressed that I've ever been. Um, And, you know, I'm just happy because I don't care about that kind of, I don't have that attitude anymore, you know? that That's what I was talking about earlier when we were talking before this interview. It's like, um, that's one thing I didn't learn from the the mentors i always learned about how to hustle because you know most people and unfortunately but fortunately because that's competition for me most people don't have the hustle that like you and i have most people don't really have it right you've got all these crazy um awesome like programs and videos and free content on youtube to really learn how to technically hustle how to financially hustle how to how to have your mind right you know um in the music industry though they don't really talk to you about like how to ha- how to like actually have your mind right you know yeah. um and i think like a lot of times you know when you when you see like motivational speakers and stuff you don't really relate that to your music as much as you obviously would with brand man sean right like when you watch brand man sean your mind your your music hat is on uh when you're um when you're watching like you know tony robbins or whatever your your tony robbins hat is on (laughs) you know you're jumping on your trampoline but uh but i never like i i thought i was like combining the two but i never i never really was until like not not too long ago it's difficult the pressure that comes from watching so many other people it you know you get that external input and now it's fucking up your own progress the way you think about yourself the way you see the world and it creates that unhappiness it creates that anxiety and even like you said yeah. feel nervous knowing who you are now you start to be in conflict with the world everybody's against me something's working against me how come me not me how come not me now 
right? I, yeah. I, I definitely in that process, especially when you add an industry that can be as chaotic as music. We've been trained, um, you know, from childhood through a very segmented system or, or a structured system, and you do this on the test, A, B, C, D, plus you know, E, F, like this is the answer to the test, you get 100. I always tell people, someone can have D. And then, and then you look at your friend, and your friend got an A, yeah. and he was like, oh, I studied for this test this morning. And I was like, dude, I've been studying for the past week for this test. Why did I get a fucking C on this, and you got an A? Exactly. You know? That's life. And even worse than that, music, unlike school, someone can have these answers and have an A, and you can copy those answers and fail in real life, right? Right. You, just because you have the same answers in music. And there's so many other factors. It's so nuanced. So I definitely understand that through that period, and I feel like people who make it through that period and are able to come out of it un- you know, I, I won't even say unscarred because the scar is maybe a lesson, a reminder, but unjaded, right? The, the, those are the people who could win with both sides, the success and the happiness, spirituality, however you want to look at it. Now, tell me this, though. You never had a manager, right? Never at all, right? I okay. never I never kept a manager. Like, I've tried out managers every mm -hmm. once in a while, and it just never worked for me, man. Like... I guess maybe my expectations are too high because a lot of the stuff that managers do, I already do on my own. So I don't really need a manager, except for the, for the politics, for someone who knows a lot of people that I don't know that can be a benefit to me. If that person can just simply finesse those connections, I mean, hell, sign up for the study team, you know? But I think a lot of managers that I, I've tried out, like probably three or four managers in the past, and First, they say they know a lot of people because they know it's important that to the artists that you know they're well connected. And mm -hmm. but the at the end of the day, it's like, are you gonna do something about it though? Are you gonna reach out? Are you gonna you know give me opportunities or at least give me potential opportunities that even if it didn't work out out of your control, the fact that you do it makes you a manager to me. Right. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of managers out there, um, they they their job is to like develop an artist, and I don't need development necessarily. I need opportunity to grow. I'll develop myself. Mm -hmm. So that's why I never really ha ended up having a manager because a lot of them were just they ended up kind of twiddling their thumbs and not doing what I truly need them to do. 100%. Yeah. I get that. I mean, that you need to bring something to the table, whoever you are on the team. And yes, there are plenty of artists who require certain things, but there's some artists, yeah. those things, and doesn't mean you don't need it. You can't use a manager, but the manager has to, has to be a compliment. They have to add something. It can't just be a generic one size fits all. So I get that. And, but what about the fact right. that I think 2017, you said you had a, a really good agent who got you on all those shows. So do you not have that right. agent? Yeah, man, it sucks. That guy was awesome. Um, he left, like, the music industry. Like, wow. the dude just called me one day and was like, man, I can't do this anymore. I, I hate my job. I hate doing this. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to law school. He went to law school, became a construction lawyer. But uh, I was like, man, I feel you. I understand. You know, like I, I totally, totally understood where he came from. Like he was awesome, man. I mean, he uh, kind of referred me to another agent and two things were happening. One, the agent he referred me to, uh, I believe out of his knowledge because I don't think he would just pass it along to some inexperienced person, but inexperienced. She was inexperienced. Um, she just wasn't in the game for a while. She didn't know a lot of people. Um, and like she was an assistant agent for a long time and just became an agent. And, you know, I just, it just wasn't working out, you know, so we just kind of parted ways. Um, and the, also the second thing was the agency just kind of fell apart. Mm. You know, I don't know the one of the biggest agents 
in that agency like laughed and took all as artists maybe there was like a fight or something but they just weren't as uh like as strong as they they used to be it's it's unfortunate but um that was the reason and you know ever since then i was um i've been looking for an agent and i've tried a couple agents out and they didn't really weren't weren't as weren't as great um you know but i it, it's hard now i think i was just lucky honestly i think i was just lucky yeah you know i made a video there was a guy who had a lot of connections um who uh, he had a lot of connections and but he loved live electronic artists and he wanted to get me shows and i just think that that was really cool and two things i've learned um politics is so important like being connected being the, being that guy you know i mean that's so important um but equally as important as important is obviously being a good artist creating good content yeah so what have you what do you yeah what are you right um in terms of maybe some failures you've had with politics and then what's maybe a tip now that you would give old self with politics. Yeah, I know you probably don't think of yourself as perfect and that politician type guy still, but I'm sure you're better than you used to be. Um, I would say don't like bug people so much, you know, like I, I would, I would like try to really pressure people to like work. Mm. Are we working? Like what's taking so long? Are we doing this? Are we doing that? I don't know. I think maybe it's cause I'm just so like quick with things. I don't like to wait around and whatnot. I produce my, I produce mix and master my own music because I don't like to wait on people to finish my songs. You know, that's my attitude. So, <laughs> you know, or like making videos, um, I just don't, I don't, I don't like to wait on people to do videos and, and stuff. And, um, I, like I, I try to use my tripod as much as possible to feel, so I can just do it all myself and, and put it online. Um, so I think, you, you know, don't, don't push people so much. I think that's what I would, would tell myself prior because when you're annoying, when someone, <laughs> When someone says you're annoying, oh, it sucks because they, they won't take you seriously anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and on the other end of that, if you're one of those people, you're probably also start, you'll get moments where you start to feel like people are against you. Um, like people don't like you. They're not responding fast enough. Like maybe it's something bigger than it actually is. Where it's just yeah, you freak yourself out. Yeah, you, you create a narrative. And so that that's definitely a gem. It sounds so small, but people who have actually been through it understand how important <laughs> that small thing yeah. is for you. You know what's funny? Um I I've lived I've lived in LA for 2017, 2018, 2019. Yeah, three years. I was in LA for three years. Mm -hmm. um i just didn't like it man i didn't like the city uh all of my connections were happening online so the city wasn't doing anything for me mm -hmm. um and like i'm freelance like i don't drive to work like i'm sitting in front of my computer like making beats all day and, and whatever so I'm, I'm at home well it's just doing harm for me that I have to pay way more rent living out here in LA when I could be way less stressed and still be doing what I love to do and still be getting all the opportunities I'm getting through the internet if I lived elsewhere, you know? So I moved out, I moved to Michigan. Um, I might end up in Chicago, might end up in New Jersey. I don't know. I don't know where I'll end up, but 
for now I'm in Michigan and I'm saving money and I feel great because I get to, you know, just do what I love to do and blah, blah, blah. When I was in LA, like I said, I wasn't getting any opportunities. Okay. When I was living here, the people that I was hitting up that I knew in LA, they were, I said, yo, I moved to LA. Let's link up sometime, you know, like whoever the person is a big shot guy, um, a friend, anyone. Yeah, let's do it sometime, right? Well, I'm here visiting LA right now for three weeks, okay? Yo, I'm here for, uh, I'm here for three weeks. Let's link up. You wanna make music? You wanna, like, I, I, can, I can actually tell them, you wanna make music, like, straight up to their face. And they're like, oh my God, yeah, we gotta link up before you leave. Dude, I've been getting the most opportunities this three weeks than I've ever gotten in the past fucking three years. I was in LA, you know? It's yeah. such a weird city, man. But um, it makes you, sense, right? Yeah, you create urgency. It's like a sales funnel, man. It's like, yeah. act or not, and then I'm going to be gone. The, the opportunity is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in my opinion, and I always tell this to everyone, it's cheaper to visit LA I mean, I guess depending where you're flying from, but for the plane ticket costs, but it's cheaper to visit LA than to actually live there when you break down the expenses. Because the cost of rent, which is a big chunk of it, is so high. Um, but also, you know, when you live here, you gotta have a, you have to have a car, you have to, or else you're gonna go broke through Uber. Um, and, but car expenses are really expensive. Like it's trying to four fifty a gallon for gas. Um, oil changes are, ex everything's more expensive. Oil changes are like a hundred bucks. Um, like tires, everything, everything's expensive. Insurance is out the way, like out to lunch. Insurance is out to lunch. I'm talking car insurance, medical insurance. Um, groceries are expensive. Like groceries are just like, way more money out here for some reason um and i just thought to myself like dude i could pay way less living out somewhere else and then if i visit and i'm creating urgency i mean that's that's the best and because i know people out here i can i have a place to stay you know that's that's always good um yeah i think if you know people in la or try to try that's my advice that's my advice to all the producers out there. If you are, or, or producers or, or rappers or anyone in the music industry, network with everyone you know in LA. If you really wanna try to get shit happening in LA, network with everyone you know in LA, if you live out of state. Um, and then when the time is right, you, hopefully you have a place to stay, go there for a week, hit up all the people that you, uh, you know, we're networking with create that urgency hey i'm here for a week if week if you want to link up man if you establish good relationships over the internet i mean hands down they're gonna be like oh he's in town let's go link up whatever dude one time my friend um who's a like a he's a, he's a famous rapper I, I really wanted to make music with him sometime this one week he's like bro i can't my friend my friend's in town um and I really want to see her like before she heads back to Toronto. This girl's like a she has a successful like fashion uh, company and stuff, and and she has like a blog and everything like that. And she, when she came to LA, she had so much good content she made. She was with this guy, and you know they had all this good stuff going. And and I'm and I'm fucking living here, and I'm like, man, I can't even get a single. Uh, day out of this guy to uh, make a song and then a week after the guy went to Europe I'm like motherfucker you know but that's you know like if I visited um, if I visited you in Atlanta or I'm sorry if I visited Atlanta and I told you hey I'm here for a week I'm sure you would try to find time out of your week to be like I want to see if this week I can find time to see Danny like that's the simple thought that you have in your head you know what I mean yeah, it's. I mean, it's a it's a strategy yeah. that doesn't get used or pushed enough. And I think everything you're saying, right. especially when you have money 
coming in and it's coming in through the internet, not the location that you're in. Stop being married right. to the don't stop being married to this dream you've been sold that this location will solve the problem for right. you. Right. And you're still getting the income and now you can lower the the uh, what is it the quality of life or the income needed for a quality of life. So now it's less stress. Yeah. You can market yourself more with the extra money or do whatever you want to do for the extra money. Right. Reinvest in your business, all that stuff. So it, it makes all the sense in the world. Then you get the benefit of people actually working with you when you act when they can and really go so. Exactly. I mean, we live in the fucking future now. Like, let's take advantage of it. You don't need to live in LA. LA is land of opp- LA is a city of opportunity. Okay. And so is Chicago, and so is New York, and so is Atlanta, and Miami, and London. You yeah. know. Why would you uh, live in LA when you can just visit, and you can still get? <laughs> probably six months worth of scram like scattered meetings into three weeks why wouldn't you do that you know that's what i'm thinking I mean, we got planes we got the internet there's nothing else to worry about you don't need to don't move somewhere unless you really are in love with the city and you want to live there and you can afford it but i see a lot of musicians man they depress the shit out of themselves move out here they think that they're they're going to be a they're considered a failing artist if they move out you know a lot of a lot of people they uh they do judge me believe it or not um when i tell them oh i don't live here anymore i live in a small town two hours north of detroit oh they think you you must have you know? it. yeah they're like it, i'm telling you a lot of people look at me like you know, <laughs> well, meanwhile, you're, uh, you're struggling and you're judging me living there and I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Interesting. So. Now, I, I appreciate that. I haven't heard anybody really um, break it down from their personal experience in that particular strategy and that insight. I think it's right. going to help a lot of people and just take away a lot of pressure that doesn't need to be there. Like you said, you don't need to. You know, live in the city, certain city. You don't for an artist. You don't have to blow up and like make your hometown love you first. Like we're not in that place anymore. So if like, you're so fucking talented, if you're so fucking talented, why don't you be the what is the what is the phrase? Something fish, uh, big fish in a small pond, something like that, yeah. where you really stand out in your small community. You know, yeah. why wouldn't you want to be the diamond in the rough? Why wouldn't you want to be like have all these dedicated fans from the city who really appreciate you because you represent your hometown. Yeah. LA doesn't have that for you. 100%. Yeah. LA is so corporate now because the, the cost of real estate is so high that your local bar, um, if it's not closed down yet, doesn't have the time to uh, give some singer or rapper or um, unique electronic artist a chance to play his local gigs or open mic nights and stuff. It ain't Chicago out here. It's it's super like, all right, uh, first of all, who the fuck are you? You know, they laugh at you. They laugh at you if you want to go play at their, walk into, go, I, anyone watching, I would dare you to walk into a bar and be like, hey, uh, what does it take to, uh, you know, just play a, play a show out here or whatever? Oh, my God. What do you mean? Um, it's all top 40 DJs that are well-connected or blah, blah, blah. They're this and that and stuff, you know. But it sucks. It sucks. I like, like, I see so many movies and stories and everything about how Sunset Boulevard, all the rock bands, when they were just up and coming, no one really knew who they were. They were playing at these dingy bars and stuff. Like, there's, there's not really anything like that anymore out in LA. A new place. It's gonna happen somewhere else now. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Okay, well, all right. tips when it comes to pricing yourself as a producer that you come up um, and I kind of learned throughout the years. Pricing yourself, like how much you charge for like music? Yeah. Dude, I have no idea because all of my, <laughs> all of my music has been like from me 
just to release on Spotify as me. Um, for the longest time, I've always just tried to find a way to split the profits 50-50 with the artist. Mm. Um, and I don't know if a regular beat maker can bring that to the table. Um, but a lot of my music is really, I'm really involved in it more than just the production. I also mix and master it. But more than just that, I have my own following, my own fan base, and I'm my own artist and I have my own fans. So how did you, know. you do so you're basically saying, Yeah, I am an artist. These people are collaborating with me, right? So I'm you're releasing mm -hmm. music under your name that other artists might collaborate. So you're a part of the track. It's not like you're just in the background making uh making beats for random people and then those artists yeah i'm not just like sending a i'm not just sending like a you know way file to some rapper to rap on and it's his now i mean he can do that that's fine you know and i can sell it to him if he wants to just do that i'm not i'm not i'm not um i'm definitely open to that like i don't mind that but i, I feel like a lot of times when people want to make music with me they also want I mean, my 270,000 followers to see their work, right? And if they want that, you know, then we got to create content. And if they want content, now now you, they got my face on it, you know? It's kind of like DJ Khaled, right? When you want to produce with DJ Khaled now, I mean, I don't know what his rate is or whatever, but I mean, he's just as important on the track as you are. Yeah. I think that um, it's... You're the real brand. That's, that's what the better it comes down to you built a real brand right so like if you want to associate with my brand we're doing this 50 50 because now your your brand and my brand are always what making this song something right mm -hmm. but if you're if you just want this to be a song by you and you don't want any promotion from me then you know you can just call it that you know what i mean that's kind of my thing so. i think but that comes from, right? Because most people are like, how do I do this? Like, particularly producers, right? How do I do this? People value me in this way. And it's that thing that you referred to earlier in this talk about, yeah, I kind of went too hard on my Instagram or I was too focused and overly focused, but that actually resulted in you building your own brand, right? You actually right. have like, that selective eye of, I want to always have these nice environments. Some people might say, I want to always have these trash environments or whatever, like whatever your brand may be, but having a, a point of view over time is what created your brand versus what video is going to make me pop it. Oh, they say I need to do behind the scenes and oh, I need to do these videos. I need to do pictures. It's not that it's communicating an artistic perspective over time and building a, a following around that, that actually projected the brand that you now have. And you're reaping the benefits of it. So I just want to applaud you on that. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, on a side note, that's a good point. On a side note, I realize there's an audience for everything. Because what I make, I have been making for so long, okay? And it, which is what I call Persian trap music. What I've been making for so long um everyone can now understand oh this is dope everyone now agrees right agrees that this guy's music is something at yeah. least something right but when i first started out everyone didn't really understand it they didn't care about it or they passionately like hated it right yeah. they thought it was stupid you're ruining Persian heritage or whatever. Mm. One thing I've learned was that there's an audience for everything. And even though it seems like there is not an audience for it, kids don't know what they want. You mm. know, most people don't know what they want musically. They're not like, I only, you make Persian stuff. Okay, well, you know, like, I'm from I'm from Chicago. What the hell is what do I have to do with Persian music? No, bye. No, people don't talk like that, you know. 
people are people are always open to realizing that wow i love this music that's why hip-hop became big right i don't think persian trap music is going to be a genre like hip-hop i don't think it's going to be a genre i just consider it my style but i definitely think that i started something that a lot of other people are um not only like becoming in like like a, a passionate fan but also involved with like people want to do that kind of music they want to make that kind of music and now i started something and i think my best advice is just do what the fuck you want to do don't worry about if there's an audience or not you know so yeah, yeah i think that's it's very well said man and i appreciate you sharing your process like that and i mean i think that's yeah perfect, it's definitely the perfect closing um, where should people follow you most man just check out my music that's all i ask i think um you know obviously yeah follow me on spotify if you want to be connected that's where i mostly have my music on um not my music um like my content I like to stay in touch but i mean spotify apple music check out my music tell me i hope you like it it's persian trap Persian trap music, Middle Eastern influence, but it's hip hop, it's electronic, um, it's cinematic, a lot of hype. It's kind of my thing. Dope. And a lot of collaborations on the way. And a lot of what along the way? Collaborations. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Looking yeah. forward to the process as it unfolds. Man. I appreciate you doing this once again, man. And hey, everybody, this is yet another link up. We'd love to get your feedback. Definitely go check out Danny. He's super dope. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead to like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. The network.